Today we're going to take a look at the general solution to a simple harmonic motion. Well, in our last example where we look at a horizontal spring like the diagram I drew right here, it is a particular situation because we kind of started with some initial condition which is that uh, the spring was pulled at some displacement of A and at time equal to zero. So if we want a general case or a general solution to a general case, so what do we have? Well, we have x is equal to, let's say this is our solution. Just by a lucky guess, let's say. x equal to a cos omega t plus phi. Uh, we'll say that this is our solution, or our general solution to our simple harmonic motion. And the question might arise, that, which is that, how do you attain this? Well, I'm going to leave that question to the math department. And as a physics department guy, let's only know that this is in fact a solution we can we can actually verify that this is a solution to our case for our case of horizontal spring here by taking the second derivative of this and you'll find that it satisfies our differential equation right here but i'm not going to do i'm going to leave the verifying step to you guys and jump to the important step which is to introduce what this equation means well this equation means that our displacement x so this is displacement is equal to amplitude a. Amplitude means the starting point. Mean that if I have a if I have a function like like um, this is badly drawn, but if I have a function like this, uh, like this, so this is our a. This is our starting point. So it is one of the initial condition uh, given before the question or before any scenario, which is that it has an amplitude, which is a starting point, right? And then it also has something called phi which is also another initial condition this is something that what we call a phase angle it means how much you shift the whole uh, graph of it for example um, if we look at uh, another scenario where we draw let's say uh, here right so as you can sh see it's more shifted to the to the right compared to this right because um, if you look at these two this is number one, this is number two. If you look at their starting point like right here, you can see that this is more shifted, shifted to the right. So so our phi here actually determines how much it is shifted. So how much is our um, this whole periodic function is shifted right here. So on these two are on an initial condition. Well, a, another property of a second order differential equation is that they're always contain two arbitrary constant. In this case, our a and our phi are two constant, determined from the initial condition, of course. So now we have the expression. Let's do some question. Okay, our question right here is given that we have a surface, we have a horizontal spring, like the example that I gave really early, where our uh, mass of the mass of the block is zero point eight kilograms, and our spring constant is one eighty. And at time equal to zero, the mass, so this is starting at time equal to zero. The mass is 0 0.04 meters away from the equilibrium position. And it has a velocity of 0 0.5 meter uh, getting far further away from the wall. So our question right here is that we need to obtain an expression in the form of x is equal to a cosine uh, omega t plus phi. So how do we do this? Well, we kind of have to utilize what we have. Well, we have m and we have k, so we can obtain omega. So omega is actually square root of k over m. And the reason for this equation is that, well, if you see our, um, our uh, general solution is something like this. If you take second derivative of this, which is going to be equal to a, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do the derivative of myself, but you can verify yourself. This is going to equal to something like, um, negative omega square x right you can verify this by taking the derivative of yourself in in the situation of a horizontal spring remember if the swing was like this right the force is actually equal to ma which is equal to negative kx right hook's law basically and if you and if you um divide both sides by m you can obtain that a is equal to negative kx over m right so if these two are both a, you make them equal to each other. This is going to be a negative uh, negative omega square x is equal to 
negative k over m uh, x. And the x uh, kind of cancel out, and the negative one cancel out, so we're left with omega squared is equal to uh, k over m, or omega is equal to square root of k over m. So this is what we're left with. So I'm going to erase this, because this is just here to demonstrate why this equation is this way. But um, this has nothing to do with our uh, solution to the question. So we know that k, in this case, is 180, and our m is 0 0.8. I'm, um, I'm going to sk skip this part's calculation and just tell you that our omega is going to be uh, it's going to be 50. Uh, uh, don't forget the unit, radian. Let's put off negative 1. So we know that omega is 15. And then what do we have here? Our general solution is x to the power of t is a cos uh, omega t plus phi. So this is what we have. Uh, well, our velocity, which is that if you take the derivative of this, which is, let's say, x prime, right? is equal to v, right? Because if you take the derivative of the displacement, it's equal to velocity. This is going to be equal to uh, negative a times uh, omega sine omega t plus phi. So this is going to be our velocity. So let's u let's utilize or let's use what we have from earlier. We know that our displacement initially is 0 0.04. So let's do that. Also, before we do this, I want to I want you to see that also one of our one of our initial condition is that it starts at time equal to zero. So if in both cases if t equal to zero, this is going to be becomes x x equal to a cos phi. So this is what it is. And if the bottom equation where t is small t is equal to zero, this is going to be v is because uh is a actually is uh, a negative a mu uh, sine phi, right? So let's use these two equations and see what we can plug up. So x is equal to a cos uh, phi. So x in this case we're given is 0 0.04, right? It's equal to uh, a we don't know and phi we don't know. And in this case, our velocity is 0 0.5. Uh, one of the initial condition so let's uh, i'm going to write this more neatly wait so 0 0.5 is good to uh well if i take omega to the front omega is 15 then it just becomes negative 15 a sine uh phi right so now we have two unknown variables that we want to solve which seems kind of impossible but it is indeed possible because when you look at cos and when you look at sine and you want to illuminate them, you could use a very famous trick at any, which says that cos uh, phi, squ cos squared phi plus sine squared phi is equal to 1. Right? We can use this very famous uh, trig identity to illuminate the cos and the sine in, in our equations. So um, let's do that. Well, um, Let's, how, do we, how do we obtain cos uh, square phi then? We need to square the whole thing. So let's move this all the way to the bottom right here. So this is going to become 0 0.04 square is equal to a square cos square phi. Because you want to square everything, right? And then this is going to be becomes... Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to move the negative 15 to the left. So it's going to be uh, 0 0.5 square times 1 over uh, negative 15 square is equal to a square sine uh, square phi. See, now we successfully um, obtained both cos square phi and sine square phi. So our, we're already a first step ahead. So let's now let's add them up. Well, according to the calculation that I did, 0.04 squared is actually 0 0.0016. Uh, then we plus this with uh, 0. Uh, 0 0.5 squared times 1 over negative 15 squared is 0 0.0011. 0 0.0011. 0 .0011. 0 .0011. This point is not that good. And then equal to a squared cos squared phi plus... Uh, 
a square sine uh, sine square phi right and now we can take um, a square out of both of them so this is going to be cos phi plus sine square phi so this is equal to one so or this is whole thing is equal to a square so a square is equal to what do we have here a square is equal to uh zero point this is let me do it in the calculator uh zero point zero zero two seven one so or a is equal to square root of zero point zero zero two seven one which a is equal to zero point zero five two i think yeah so this will be our a so we just obtain a and that's very important because if you recall to our original equation which is that x is equal to a cos uh, uh, phi, uh cos phi and that v is equal to uh what do we have v is equal to negative 15 a sine phi right so if we have a and we have and we also know x v we can just obtain the angle right so i'm gonna skip the calculation and then in this case we obtain uh phi to be 32 uh 39.8 degrees or 320 degrees in this case we obtain the phi to be negative 300 uh, negative 39.8 degrees or 320 degrees well in this case we since uh, phi must satisfy both equation right so it must have the value of 320 so we just obtain phi to be 320 degrees and then we just convert that to a uh, radian because um, angle of, the angular frequency omega is in radian. So we need to convert that to radian. So we need to convert this to radian. And then this just becomes, uh, convert. This just becomes, I'm gonna skip the calculation again. So this is gonna be 5.59 radian. So here we have it, our equation. So our equation takes form of x is equal to a cos, uh, cos, omega t plus phi and then we have every variable now so our equation then becomes x is equal to well our a is what our a is 0 0.052 0 0.052 cos and our omega is what omega is 15 so 15 t plus damn my my t and my plus are very similar looking so i'm gonna tweak this a bit so 15 t plus our um uh, phi, which is going to be 5.59. So there you have it. You have successfully obtained an expression of um, of this um, particular cases of a of a horizontal spring in a general solution. In the case of a general solution for a harmonic uh, simple harmonic motion. So this is our uh, this will be a basic introduction to the to the general solution and how to apply it in simple harmonic motion.